Welcome to Tea Time, the podcast. I am Cassie Marina, fondly known as the Branding Queen, and I am a digital branding expert helping businesses get online and thrive doing so. I am passionate about sharing my knowledge through content creation like this podcast, online classes, and workshops, as well as through the services of my branding agency to help you develop your online systems. Think of this podcast as the place to get the latest advice, strategies, tips, news, and inspiration on building your brand online using the tools available to us, but most importantly, thought-provoking content to improve your mindset, to maximize on these tools, and put context to -to day-to-day developments in the online world of business with a little bit of tea edition facts and sass because I really want you to thrive online. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let's begin. This episode is sponsored by my upcoming workshop, Roadmap to MailChimp Mastery. If you have been stressing over the ever-changing algorithm, people not seeing your posts, turning lights into sales on social media, you should have been building your list since yesterday. Or maybe you've tried and you just stuck on building it out strategically and can't quite get the nurture sequence to work out the way you'd like to. Learn the ins and outs of email marketing using MailChimp at my upcoming workshop, Roadmap to MailChimp Mastery. Just head on over to www.mybrandacademy.co. So today I wanted to talk to you guys all about, I will not be out of work. It's a self-care episode. And I'm going to give you a background of what inspired me to not just have this episode, but how it, how it, how I made the decision <laughs> to do this episode. I was like, okay, I started noticing a trend, right? Um, one of my colleagues was not 100% in health. And that just kind of stood out to me because I had been noticing a trend, especially as creative entrepreneurs, um, especially if you're a solopreneur, you know, even if you have a team, you know, you for the most part are a solopreneur slash creative entrepreneur. Actually, this could apply to anybody. So forget that I said that. Once you're an entrepreneur running your own business, We are all prone to this. We tend to go, 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 go so hard at times that we end up in burnout. And I decided that because we are in this time frame of the year where we tend to go really hard for whatever reason, because it's the holiday season, it's busy, or as it's the end of the year coming and we really want to double down on our goals, it's that time of year where things become very overwhelming. And I figured that this topic is very important as we head into the thick of the holiday season and so forth. All right. So I was noticing I would be watching my stories, not just on Instagram, but on WhatsApp. So, you know, these are people that I know pretty closely and everybody's complaining that they're tired. Some people are trying to show up for their business, but they're falling asleep. Um, You're seeing seeing that we're going hard. And I first must say that I commend everybody who's taking action and they're going hard. But we also have to remember to have balance. And we're not going to always perfect it, but we must remember to check in and strive for balance as much as possible. There will be those times where we have to exercise mental toughness, where What mental toughness is, is that, hey, I know my limit is 15, right? So if I want to achieve a certain goal, I might have to push harder than 15 and go to about a 17. That's what I mean by mental toughness, by just pushing the needle 
a little bit more than what you can take because this is how we build resilience. I mean, when you go to the gym, you know that you could only go this much because you are trying to build strength. In order to build strength, you have to push harder than what your body can really take, right? But not so much that you end up in a stretcher and you're in the hospital, right? This is um, safe levels of pushing yourself past your limit. And the same has to be applied even in your business. There will be times where you have to do an all-nighter. But are you going to go do an all-nighter as your daily routine, which is to do it day in, day out for two weeks straight? Are you going to go two nights without sleeping? Some of you might be listening and saying, yes, I've done that. But I'm here to say it's not healthy and we want to be healthy entrepreneurs, right? When you are going hard at the gym and you're going past your limit because you're conditioning your body, that does not mean you're going to go to the limit of being unhealthy, right? You're at the gym, you're training so that you can have um, the body that you want and to also be healthy, right? So... I've noticed that many have been going hard. Um, some probably are just overbooking their services and you're trying your best to deliver your, your service to your clients, right? And I commend that. But please, like, let's not run ourselves into the ground. And, you know, you might be thinking, well, Cassia, how, how do I do this? Well, I don't have all of the answers. I'm not a self-care expert. But I do want to share some tips that helped me to balance, right? So that's the introduction. Um, to kind of wrap up the introduction, in um, within my circle of entrepreneurs, one person had shared with a group of us this video about I will not be outworked. And to be quite honest, I liked it. Um, I appreciated the video. It is a motivational video, but it's not a philosophy that I 100% subscribe to. It's very motivational to say I will not be outworked, but without proper awareness of knowing, okay, I'm, I'm going to, you know, say I'm not going to be outworked. I'm going to go hard, but I also know that I need to rest. I also know that I need to eat. I also know that I should drink more water, <laughs> right? Um, I know that I can't just run on coffee all day, which sometimes I'm guilty of doing, trying to do. So I want to bring perspective that, yes, we want to go hard and we don't, we're not going to be outworked and we're not going to let somebody else one up on us when we know we have so much more to offer, but not to the extent that, hey, I'm, I'm going to just forget all self-care. And then there are other people that you might look at and you might admire and be like, wow, how are they up from 4, 5 a.m. and going whole day at a day job, then doing their business after hours, and they go straight until 1 a.m. in the morning. Now, I would say that isn't healthy, but some people are able to do that. They probably just in that phase in their life that their passion fuels them so much that they don't feel it, but at some point you are going to feel it because we're human and we are not immortal and eventually it will catch up with us. So don't just look at others. Like I used to in my early 20s, I used to look at another person, well, I used to model, and she would be doing her job, going to this thing and that thing afterwards, and she'll be all up and down and she knew how to practice staying up late, not getting any sleep. She was extremely, I wouldn't say what, she is extremely driven. And I used to feel like I was weak. I used to feel like, why can't I do that? I know I need sleep, right? But I just told myself, okay, maybe I just need to push. Maybe, you know, she's accustomed doing this. So she has built that resilience and I need to build that within myself, right? So I didn't grow up a certain way. She has a different background. Okay, Cassia, you need to do better. You need to go hard. And I tried it and it did not work out. So my body just doesn't operate like that. I would wake up if I tried to push hard and just operate in two, three hours of sleep, you'll see bags under my eyes. 
where meanwhile she wouldn't. She just can't do that. And we have to have our own awareness to know how much that we can take. And when we have new self-awareness, then, okay, this is what I can manage. This is what I can do. You have to find your own rhythm and your own routine to still accomplish a lot, but you're accomplishing a lot in your own way, not another person's way. Because the way Sandra is able to get things done may not be the way you, James, will get things done, all right? But we could all be very successful and accomplish big goals in our own way. But it will require planning and understanding how much we can do and also knowing when I need to schedule in breaks, which is what I call white space in between all of the madness, right? So I've made up my mind. I'm going hard for the, the, the final quarter of the year, but pencil in that white space. And I'll dive deeper into white space in a minute, but I want to get back to my notes before I go off course into this topic, right? So that's the introduction. So my first point is to know your limits, which I touched on. Know yourself, know your limits. You have to know what's your starting point so that you can build a system that's going to work for you and your business. Now, it's not going to look perfect every single day. You're not going to follow this to-do list or this routine and this compartmentalizing your day perfectly. But once you know where you are at, you can now build a compass to go from A to B. Then when you reach to B, okay, all right, I know where I am. You look around and then you go over to C, right? So know yourself, know where you're at, know where your starting, starting point is so that you can now build your own roadmap to success, right? We can't plot a path on, let's say you open up Google Maps. How are you going to plot a path? You have to start with point A. You have to start with... Um, your current position, you have to know where you are on the map to know, okay, this is where I am. This is where I'm trying to go. Now, let me plot my path. How much can I take? Can I go straight without a pit stop? <laughs> right? I hope this is making sense and this doesn't sound silly, but I do I need to make three pit stops along the way? Do I need rest every two hours? You need to have rest stops along the journey of success. We just can't. You just can't, right? We just can't. We're not robots, right? Practice incremental pushes to push past your limit. So like I was saying earlier, if you know your limit is 15 and you want to build mental toughness, just start by pushing two needles further. Don't try to push 10 all in one go because that's a recipe for burnout. Do things in incremental stages. Right. The other thing that I want to mention is white space. White space is a concept that I learned two years ago and it has stayed with me ever since. It has been such a mindset shift when it comes to just being a very um, high achieving individual, whether you're an entrepreneur or you have a job, you're career driven, whatever it is that you do. Once you're a high achieving individual, you, you need to remember that you're human. And we want to be healthy, okay? I know I have said that already before, but you are no good to your job. You are no jo um, good to your clients. You are no good to your customers. You are no good to your team. You are no good to your family. You are no good to your kids. If you are on a stretcher in the hospital, you are forced to have to take rest. And you are actually possibly losing income by being down. So now you're not serving anyone. You're not making any money because you just have maxed out. All right? Self-care is important. Schedule that in. If you can't do it once a week, once a month, at least you have that one thing to look forward to. If you follow me on social media and you're familiar with, when I say follow, not just follow, but actually follow my content, some of you might remember a picture of me on my feed on the beach in, I think it was a red bikini. That was me practicing self-care. Some people message and be like, okay, I want to do it like you. I'm going to the beach on a Monday. 
well, yes, I'm going to the beach on a Monday because this is why I got into business. I got into business to not be a slave to my business, right? We, some might be still at jobs and building a business. You can still find ways to reward yourself for taking that bold move and that bold path. We have to reward ourselves because then sometimes I feel like, what's the point? If you're going to work this hard and not take full advantage of the perks of the whole point of getting into being at least self-employed, you should reward yourself with little trips here and just be like, you know what? Even amongst a ton load of work, just be like, you know what? The work is going to be there tomorrow. Like the same attitudes that you would have in your job and know that, hey, I need a break. You're going to come back to your task with so much more vitality and a lot more creativity because when you are burnt out, it shows in your work. Don't you want to give your best? So that's just some food for thought. I mean, and things happen, accidents happen when you are not 100%. And I mean, even if you're not 100%, we should be operating at least 75. But when you are down at 40%, listen, I ran a question um, poll asking persons who are viewing my stories on a scale of one to 10, rate your self-care right now. And the numbers were alarming. I know some might have just been jokingly saying minus 10. Um, some said zero, some said four, some said numbers below five and that they need to do better. Please, yes, this podcast is me pleading to you, pleading to you. Because you all are my peeps and I want to see you all enjoy your businesses. Like business is already as stressful as it is already. And if you are going to make it to the finish line, finish line meaning having a sustainable business for years to come, you need to take care of yourself. You need to indulge in self-care. Self-care is something that's actually productive for your business. Hey guys, this is a quick break in the show just to remind you that if you've made it this far, that you must be enjoying it. So if you're enjoying this episode and you found any value to it, please share by screenshotting and posting it to your social media, specifically stories, because you know, that's my jam. And tag me and let me know that you shared it or what your takeaway is. You shouldn't feel guilty about it. Like, this is you actually taking care of business. Like, listen, I need a day. Or I just need this morning to just do absolutely nothing. Schedule that in. You have errands to do. You have this client to do. We sit at the beginning of the week or the the week before and we plan out the following week. We plan out the next two weeks. We book our clients. Book yourself. Right, pull out a calendar, pull out your Google calendar, look at it, choose a day, and type in white space. Type in your booking, a call for yourself. (laughs) That day is all yours, and actually put in in the calendar, like schedule it in that full day. So nobody can come and book in your calendar that day. Right. If you use any tools like Calendly or Acuity or any booking calendars for your services, or if you manually book, you see that there and don't be tempted to delete it or move it around. Maybe you might have to move it around, but may, do not put it off. If you need to change it from Wednesday to Tuesday or from Wednesday to Thursday, that is unacceptable moving it around. But make time for self-care. Overwork is not a badge of honor. I'm going to say that again. Overwork is not a badge of honor. So we say things like, I will not be outworked. I I work so hard. I'm so busy. Society has us thinking that if we are always constantly busy, always constantly going, always going, 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 and overworking ourselves notice I said overworking not working hard or not pushing past it um not in uh, what I'm trying to say is not mental toughness 
overworking yourself. That means pushing past any reasonable limit that we know is unhealthy is not a badge of honor. Please keep that in mind. All right. You know, I think that many times we think it's a badge of honor. We complain. We complain in our stories. We complain to other entrepreneurs and say, oh my gosh, I've been just so tired. And it's like, are you really saying this because you are trying to have a break and you're hoping for a break? Or you just want to pop your collar and be like, yeah, you know, I've been working really hard. It's not a badge of honor. So the next time you think to open your mouth and say, I'm so tired, um, is it really that you're just trying to, you know, gain stripes? Or how about you just put your phone on do not disturb? I did that a day, actually. I was just past my limit one day and it's like, you know, I'm no good. I can't, I can't function like this. I can't do anything like this. I put my phone on do not disturb and the world continued to spin. <laughs> The world continued to spin, believe it or not. And it felt so good afterwards because I knew if I didn't put my phone on Do Not Disturb, the WhatsApp messages are coming in. Um, I could never properly take a nap anymore like I used to. Like before, I would just put my phone down. It's on silent. But it's so... Um, we have this knee-jerk reaction these days to pick up our phones and the fingers just move, right? We said, okay, I'm coming off this app now. But we just pick it up out of habit. So what I've done is I just put it on do not disturb. Put the phone um, just a little, not arm's length away, at least further than arm's length. And I just close my eyes. So if I can't do things like go to the beach or go to the movies or anything like that, indulge in anything that's non-work related, for the very least, I'll just close my eyes. Whether I sleep or not, it doesn't matter. That is just a practice that sometimes needs to happen. Sometimes you just need to turn your phone off completely. But do not disturb felt very doable for me instead of just going 100% cold turkey. Um, and it felt really good. You know, people just message you. Like when you think about your day, people just message you for things that really aren't urgent, but it's tempting to not get sucked in. And I don't just mean people, even clients. It's not urgent. It really isn't. And what's urgent is your self-care. Strategy. So I want to talk about strategy, how you can still achieve your goals without having burnout. You know, strategy is just another way of saying, I'm doing this task with intention. Having a plan, okay, this is what I want to achieve. How am I, what is the shortest path, not a shortcut, but what is the shortest, most effective and efficient path to getting to location C, right? Instead of taking the long way. So when you open up your app and you plot in, okay, you need directions to get to this location. You Sometimes you get to routes which route do you want to take and sometimes you decide hmm, do i want to take the long route that has less traffic or do i want to take this shorter route but even though it's shorter there's traffic hmm, which one do i want to do so you have to decide do you want to go 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 the one that's going to take the most energy versus taking the train like which one do you want? Do you want to take the car? Do you want to take the train? Which one is going to get you to your destination with the most efficiency, right? And that is what I call strategy. So you have a look at these fights, these wrestling matches, and you look at it and you might look at it with others and it's like, oh my goodness, this guy has no strategy. He's just throwing hands all wild and the other guy you can see his head is in the game and he is barely making movements but he's just ducking all of these crazy non, um, non-strategic throws and he's just waiting for this guy to get tired and he comes in with the blow don't you want to just achieve your goals with one strategic 
full force and just hit it out of the park in one. And you end the fight, not just winning it, but you win it and you end it. There's the, your, your, your opponent is down. He's tired. He's just tired. You know? Does it mean that he, he wasn't stronger or he wasn't better? Or he didn't have more endurance? No. The other guy was just more strategic. He waited for you to become tired. Do you want to be the opponent who, while you might still win the race, you take longer to get there because you're just burnt out and tired because you had to spend time recuperating? Or you want to be the person who is indulging in the self-care and doing all the things that they need to do so they have the energy to show up and not have to have the downtime because they're sick and because they're unwell. You want to hit your goals full force, straight out of the park strategically. There are ways to do things smart and more efficiently, and that is through strategy. All right? One focus punch instead of throwing 10 fists with no effectiveness, getting tired before the match is over. My next tip is to get organized. What I've found, many people just aren't straight up organized. You know, take some time the night before or in the morning. This morning, I had a plan to go do errands. But because I pulled an all-nighter and because I just didn't feel prepared, I decided to cancel. I was like, there's no point in me running around aimlessly. You know, I can't find my documents this morning to do the things that I wanted to go get done. I decided, you know what? Reschedule, re realign my day. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to make use of this day by recording these two podcasts that I wanted to record and batch record. And I'm going to come out next week fully prepared so that I can get the most done in the shortest time frame possible. So now I'm batching my task. I'm not just talking about content creation, but hey, I know I have errands to do. How many can I effectively do? Most of these things that I want to do are within um, walking distance of each other. So I've decided I'm going to go to these three places and I should get that done within the first half of the morning. Instead of doing one today and you're wasting time driving around looking for a park on three different days, get organized, plan accordingly. And my favorite, make use of technology. Automate, use the tools, schedule things. Like um, I say this all the time, and if you haven't heard it before, if it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done most of the time. If I don't write it down, sometimes it doesn't get done. I have to schedule everything in. I have a system. I have an intake process. That if you don't fill out the form, I'm probably going to forget about you. If I don't get that written in my email, I'm probably going to forget about it. So have systems. Have a schedule. Use the tools. This is why I'm like so passionate about email marketing because it allows me to just schedule communication with people who want to hear from me and opted in to hear from me via my blog, via my podcast. Like I set everything up that when I publish this podcast, it automatically goes out to my list. When I click publish on the blog, it automatically shoots out to my list. I don't have to do any extra heavy lifting. I don't have to delegate that task and pay um, a VA extra hours for something that can be automated. What are the things that you can spend time today automating that it continues to work for you passively? You know, you hear a lot about passive income, but what about systemizing things in your business that things and tasks get done passively? You know, everybody, I want passive income, I want passive income, I'm working too hard. Well, guess what? You're also working too hard, nurturing your audience, nurturing clients, finding new clients. You can automate many things in your business, but for some reason, you're not doing it. So have a lot more passion and enthusiasm for not just looking for passive streams of income, but passive systems that you can implement in your business that can have you be more efficient, build to your brand experience, and just overall will just have you operating on a whole new level and 
make time. You can shave off so many hours and those hours that you shave off could be when you add them all together, that could be a morning of self-care. Take the time today to seek out the experts that can help you automate. Get on the consultation course. Find out these things. So an email list, if you haven't built one already, you definitely should check out MailChimp. Check out the freebie that I have on mybrandacademy.co. You will enter your information. I have like a free email course. It's not, so let me clarify, I'm not using the term free email course too often because I don't want people to think the course or the workshop is free. No, it's an email course on automation and seeing how a nurture sequence works. I want you to experience, if you've never really experienced, well, we've all experienced a nurture sequence, but you don't realize that it's happening. So in this nurture sequence, each email is a template that shows you the template and the strategy and the objectives of what your first email that goes out should say, what the second one should say. So that's just like a little insight into, yeah, that's just a little insight into an example of how you can automate certain things in your business. There's so much more where that came from, but I just want to end this by saying thank you for listening to this podcast and please, please take care of yourselves. Hey, did you enjoy today's podcast? Then do me a huge favor and spread the word about this podcast. All right, just screenshot, upload to your Instagram stories and tag me so that I know that you did it because your support matters. We need to spread the word about the podcast because if you enjoyed this podcast or it helped you in any way, we need to help others and I would love to get the word out and have it help someone else too. When you share this podcast, it allows the podcast to grow and it allows me to continue creating more content just like this for you. So screenshot, share to your stories and tag me. It will mean so much to me.